The next one being the fifth volume of Spy Family by uh, by Acacia Endo. I really want to say the wrong author for this. Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with my final reads of 2023. it's time to finally talk about the final few books that I ended up reading in December. I'm a little behind on my video schedule here, so we're just coming out a few things a little bit late, but we are here to finally talk about the final books that I read in December and kind of wrap up the year as a whole. So this shouldn't be a very long video because I only read five things and technically one of those things I DNF'd. So it'll be a relatively short wrap up when it comes to wrap ups that I have been doing in the past few months, but no more than the past few months. Without further ado, I feel like there's not a whole lot to talk about. I'll section the video as I always do if there's a specific book you want to know my thoughts on, but otherwise let's just dive right into the stats. So like I mentioned, I read five books and that was over the course of 1,449 pages and about 10 and a half hours listened. And that's because I literally had one thing on audio. Um, so as the formats, you can see I had one audio, two physical, one ebook and one mixed. So I definitely um, only counted the audiobook that I finished because one of the audiobooks technically was my DNF. But anyway, and then as far as age category goes, we had three YA and two adult. Uh, my genres were spread out-ish. We had two romance, one mystery, one fantasy, and one contemporary. And then as far as the ratings go, we had one five star, three four star, and one DNF. So we'll dive right into the DNF just because that was the one that I started the month off with, which was A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. So this is a very, very soft DNF in the sense of I started it and it was cute. It was, it's a very like Hallmark style story. It follows, I can't remember their names because of course I can't, but our main female lead is a plus size adult film actress. Um, and she basically gets cast due to some circumstances in a Hallmark style whole wholesome kind of movie. Um, but no one can know that she is an adult film star. So she has to kind of keep that under wraps. And so the main guy who has been cast in this movie has done quite a few movies like this before. It's a Christmas movie and they have like a weekend or like a week to film it. And so he is part of a like ex boy band. So he's trying to get his, um, reputation back. So he's been doing these movies and he recognizes her from her online persona. And she recognizes him obviously because she is obsessed and has been obsessed with him since she was really, really young. So it is their story. They're not allowed to, you know, do anything fraternize with each other. But of course they have a little bit of a down low relationship. I only made it, I'm not sure if I even wrote it down. I didn't make it very far. I made it like maybe 10% of the way through this book. And I just was not in the mood. Like this was, I had just come off of a month of reading absolutely nothing. And so I thought for sure a contemporary romance that was a fun little like Hallmark style story, but with sex because I had just literally been doing nothing but watching Hallmark. So I was like, this is perfect. And I went into this one and it just, isn't my vibe. And I've noticed this a little bit in my current reading as well is that the books that are super smutty that I used to love, I'm just not in the mood for right now, which is a little bit sad because you guys know I love a good smutty book. But if it's a like fantasy with smutty elements, like that's fine. But for this one, it was like straight up a smutty romance. And like from the page one, because of what she did, it was very apparent on the page and that kind of just rubbed me the wrong way. So I say softy enough because I definitely want to get back to this book. I definitely want to try it again, maybe at the end of this year when it's again like Christmas season because I think I would really enjoy it and I like the story and I don't think it's anything against the writing. I don't think it's anything against the plot development or the characters or literally anything like that. I think I just hit it at the wrong time. So this one was a victim of circumstance, let's say, which is why it's that soft DNF. So like technically I DNF'd it and like if I don't get around to it, then oh well. But it's definitely a book that like I'm, I'm wanting to give a second chance to in the future. The next one is one 
that just kind of like I didn't expect a whole lot going into and it became my favorite and that is The Kingdom of Sweets by Erica Johansson. This is my book of the month book that is a dark fantasy nutcracker reimagining um and it is very 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 loosely based on the nutcracker when i say the nutcracker i mean all the characters that you expect to see in the nutcracker are in this book but beyond that the world of the sweets and the kingdom of the sweets very very different um so we follow two twins in this book so we have clara and natasha and this book it takes place in natasha's point of view and so when they were very young like infants days old they were visited by the dross this drossama character who is kind of the magician in the neighborhood but he also has like a lot of control and a lot of sway over a lot of people so he's kind of like um if you need money or if you have any kind of financial issues he's the one you go to he's almost giving he gives off kind of like a mob boss persona almost but he does sleight of hand magic um or what what appears to be sleight of hand magic and so he decides like once they're born he immediately assigns himself as their godfather their parents have no say in this and he says that one of them um clara will be the bright sister she will have everything good that happens to her in the world and then natasha will be the dark sister and she is kind of forgotten about so all good things that happen to this family happen to clara and she sees the world through kind of rose tinted glasses whereas natasha sees things as they really are and so it follows them it takes place in russia so it does have some historical elements of what's going on there's definitely some mentions especially at the very end when it talks about like the future it mentions a few things that definitely were happening and some characters political parties that were taking place in russia i don't know if it gives you a time um i don't think it actually does give me like an actual year but it is was written very very well in my opinion and I really liked Erica Johansson's writing style now this is the author I've never read anything about this author but this is the author who wrote the Queen of the Tearling series that I have on my shelves and I very much want to read I have them I think on ebook as or on audiobook as well so like I definitely want to read that series it's just I've never gotten around to it but reading this book by her I'm very interested in her kind of writing style because she paints a very clear picture and like I said this is a dark story um things happen right away that kind of sets the plot in motion that I don't want to tell you about because it definitely is not mentioned that's not this and I would consider it a huge spoiler but it's definitely like what kick starts the story um because Natasha ends up creating this bargain if you will with the sugar plum fairy who is not the um perfect adorable happy fairy that she's thought of in the original Nutcracker story. So it's very dark. It is a very interesting story. It takes a lot of turns that I did not expect. Um, it's not like gory or anything like that. It's just the story is dark. That's the best way I can describe it. And it was perfect. I don't know why this is the vibe that I was in, especially for the Hallmark, not Hallmark, for the holiday season when I'm usually into the rom-com fluffy I don't know just this year was not the year that like it felt like Christmas until Christmas had passed I guess is the best way I can describe it so like I was not in the Christmas mood a lot of December and so this played well into that for me so I love this highly recommend it does not feel like a Christmas story if you I mean it does take place around Christmas but as far as like it giving off it's Christmas and only Christmas that's not what happens here so if this is a somewhat interesting story to you I would say still give it a try just because it is very like fantastical but it is a historical fiction fantastical story um and yeah I don't know it was just it was very well written in my opinion it just hit at the right time and I very much enjoyed my time so this one got four and a half I don't know if I said that already but it got four and a half stars I then went hard into the graphic novel manga side because the rest of the books I read were graphic novels or mangas. The next one being The Fifth Volume of Spy Family by uh, by Atatsia Endo. I really want to say the wrong author for this but this is the fifth volume. You guys know I love this series. I ended up giving this one four stars. I really enjoyed this version. Um, I feel like not a whole lot happened in this one. We got some characters we did a few side plots I would say in this one. So I've talked about this quite a lot 
on this channel. Um, but basically this follows a family um, that's kind of a made-up family. We follow our main character, Twilight, who is a spy. And in this world there's like an east and a west and they are at odds with each other. And he has been sent to infiltrate this boarding school because his target is of one of the parents at this boarding school. So he ends up creating a fake family. He finds this woman to marry and they adopt a daughter. Um, and the daughter is a telepath. So she can tell what um, Twilight is trying to do. And so she's trying to help him out to fit, like complete his mission without him knowing that she's there to help complete his mission. So you've got them, but then you've also got the mom who, Twilight doesn't know this, but obviously the daughter, I think her name's Anya. Um, I don't know why that's, yeah, Anya right there. Um, Anya knows this obviously because she's a telepath, but this woman is an assassin. So she takes, she's really, really bad at like the homemaking side of things, but she is a fantastic assassin. <laughs> so and I think they are working on the same side, but it's never actually said. Either way, this family is created and it's just them trying to get her to befriend the boy at this school and so in this one specifically it's the kind of mission if you will is she needs to get good grades in some of her finals because if she doesn't then she'll get some demerits and if she has too many demerits she gets kicked out of the school so she's trying to do well in these classes as well as getting this boy to befriend her and he cannot stand her so and then there's some other side plots and stuff that happened in this one specifically but I very much enjoyed it it was just the next installment I love this family I feel like in this one we really get to see Twilight and the mom whose name is Yor kind of I'm not sure if we're going to have a like an actual romance between the two of them by the end of the series but we really get to see them kind of become closer as friends let's say um we have a side character in here who is trying to pull them apart and it does not succeed which was really kind of fun to see this family unit who which should not work work really well together so i very much enjoyed my time reading that one and i'm excited to continue i have two more that i physically own and i think there are 11 out right now so i need to collect some more but I'm enjoying my time when I can fit these in. I then picked up the best graphic novel in the entire world um, because of because it is. And that's just the fifth volume of Hearts Tapper by Alice Oseman. This one came out in December. I can't remember when, but it came out in December and I scarfed this up immediately. Um, it made me just fall all head over heels in love with these characters all over again. I very much enjoy my time with these characters and I have been loving, absolutely loving the Netflix adaption of this because I think they are doing such a fantastic job. Now I know Alice Oseman has a pretty big, I would say I think she has a pretty big hand um, in the making of that TV show, but they are staying pretty close to the original material. Um, maybe not in every little detail, but like in the vibe and the feel of these two characters, which I've really been enjoying. So this one is the penultimate volume. We have one more that's going to be coming out and that'll be the end of Nick and Charlie's story. And I'm really sad to see them go, but I just love them so much. They're so cute. Um, but I'm sure a lot of people know what this series is about, but we follow our two main characters, Nick and Charlie, as they become more than friends and figure out the world together. Um, and this one specifically, Nick is older than Charlie. And so he has been trying to figure out next steps because he's no longer going to be in school. He's going to be going to whatever the next step is for him or for them. That's what Nick is trying to figure out. And so it's talking about, you know, the, the kind of the normal things that you expect from a YA story that surrounds people who are in the later half of their schooling system and so Nick's trying to figure out where he wants to go he thinks he has figured out a place that he wants to go because it's super close but then he goes there and doesn't really love it and then of course some of the colleges that he may feel better towards are really far away and so it's just the two of them kind of figuring out their what's next for them and so like I said there's one more volume after this one and this one was a very nice kind of bright light because the fourth volume was kind of a harder volume it dealt with a lot of mental illness in that one so this one was nice to see kind of the bright light 
after such a dark story. Um, but I love them. I love them so much. I love the writing. I love the art style. I think that's just really cute. It's really easy to get through. I mean, it's just the two of them figuring stuff out. Also being teens, they talk about their first time and things like that. So it definitely has all of those coming of age things that you expect from a Y story. And I just love them. And I flew through it literally in an afternoon. I think I finished this one. Oh, I think I finished Spy Family, this one, and then the next one all on the very last day of the year. Like I just kind of flew through them. And this one was definitely by far my favorite. I just love Heartstopper so much. And I'm kind of sad that I like read it right away because now I have to wait forever for the next installment, which who knows when we're going to get that one. But I'm so happy. It was so good. And then the very last book that I ended up reading, like I mentioned, it's also a graphic novel, and that is the fifth volume of Fence. Um, and this one is the last one that is out. The sixth one is coming out in January, I think. It might already be, be out by the time you see this, but um, I have been reading them through my library on, um, not Scribd, Hoopla, and have been really enjoying that. And this one was just the next installment. They end up in this one, they, the team goes to a camp. I mean, it's not really a camp. It's like a weekend situation um, where they are battling other really, really high top tier fencing teams. And this one, it's more about the individual strength. Whereas the last one, I think, I think the last volume, they did like their first actual tournament. And so, or not tournament, but competition, and they worked as a team. And so now we're seeing our main two characters who haven't been able to see each other this entire time actually working together and having the one that's much better help the second, the other one, and seeing the progress in that. And then we've also got some of the rivals who we have been building up to for a while show up and they just there's a few things like that. So it's these volumes are interesting to talk about because I really enjoy them. They're fun, they're, but they're really, really short. And so there's not a lot to say about them as volumes themselves. But I am officially caught up as far as like what is currently out. So I'm just waiting for my library to get a copy whenever it comes out, if it's not already out, of the sixth one because I am very interested to continue. I don't know if this is the end or if there's going to be more. It feels like we're not close to the end, but what do I know? But I like seeing the friendships in this group and some of our characters um, just being there for each other and watching the coaches watch these kids get better and just little things like that, that it's, it's, it's very nice to see like the camaraderie of the team. Um, even though maybe a couple of them don't get along as well, but they just kind of make themselves work because they have to for them to get anywhere in the competitions. So I loved it. It was fun. Not, like I said, not a whole lot happened. It was just a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one competition and then we really got to see our main character the one who's not as good come out of a shell and ask some of the other teams for help because like there was there was some time in between all of the one-on-one -on -one competitions where you were encouraged to ask someone for a one-on-one -on -one duel just to see like someone you might might not have had the chance to duel before to see how they are or if you're hoping to learn something from someone and so we see this guy kind of taking on a couple of people to help learn some skills that he might not have and seeing him try to perfect it so like it's just that you seeing them become better at the at what they're doing and I just love seeing that so this was definitely a fun one to dive into but again hard to talk about because like not a whole lot happens um it's just a team fencing but it's enjoyable for some reason. And that's it. That is a look at all of the books that I read in the month of December. Like I said, not a whole lot to talk about because a lot of them, I just wasn't vibing. You know, like I'm still, I think I've burned myself out is what happened in the summer and fall. So I'm just very slowly making my way back. So um, we're probably going to see quite a few smaller wrap-ups here in the future, but that's okay. I'm enjoying what I am reading and that is what matters because like I said, I only DNF'd one book and that was just because I knew if I kept it continuing, I was going to put myself in a slump and then everything else I just really enjoyed. So I had a pretty decent December, I will say, 
But that's a look at all of the books that I finished out the year with. As always, please let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned or if you'd like to talk about a book that you finished out the year with or if there's one that you were currently reading that you'd like to chat about. I always love hearing from you guys, so feel free to leave all that fun stuff down below. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you'd like to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So check all that out. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.